You see, fear must be fed in order for it to gain power. And the way that fear is fed best is it loves a buffet of what if and worry. I mean, it just loves it. It eats on it constantly. What if they don't like me? What if I end up alone? What if my child never comes back to faith? What if I relapse again? What if this is as good as it gets? What if I lose my house? What if the cancer comes back? What if I lose my job? What if after all this studying, I still fail? And so now you're in the wilderness. The wilderness of what if. I now find that what if is a weapon that the devil uses to keep me from doing things that I know good and well in my spirit God has called me to do. You, you know, it's amazing to me how people can so clearly hear the devil but can't hear God's voice. I mean, isn't that true? I mean, don't you? It, it just seems like no one ever struggles to hear the voice of the enemy in their life. But you, constantly I meet people who struggle to hear the voice of God in their life. I, I mean, it really is astounding. It's amazing to me that a God who, who has been so faithful can be so doubted and yet an enemy who is completely unfaithful can be so trusted. Now here's what we have to remember about this, it's very important, is that the Bible is very clear that Satan is a liar. And there's nothing that, he, he can't even tell the truth. He, he doesn't know how to speak it. It's a language that's foreign to him. And then equally, God can never lie, and he is truth. And any time that God creates something, Satan creates a counterfeit to it. Anytime that God creates something, Satan's going to say, well, I'm going to create a counterfeit to that. And so when God created faith, Satan created fear. Faith attracts God. Fear attracts the enemy in your life. Faith gives God access to work in your circumstances. Fear gives the enemy access to work in your circumstances. See, the enemy's central objective is to get you to doubt God's promises. Every fear that's ever brought into your life is an attempt to nullify a promise that God made you in his word. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Fear wants you to forget that God's powerful. To the fact that, let me, let's just have a little exercise. Think of your worst fear. Because your worst fear is not more powerful than God's ability to bring his best into your life. If the God who hung the universe, the stars, the moon, the sun, if the God who has no equal, if the God who, who Scripture tells us uses the earth as a footstool, if he loves you, what in the world are you worried about? What are you fearful of? I mean, if, if that's the God who wants to be in relationship with you and give you attention, if that's the love that he is sharing, what in the world are you scared of? And, and, and here's, I, he's already taken care of the worst problem in your life, which was your eternal salvation. You, there's nothing you could do, nothing you could work, nothing you could earn, no person you could get to that would fix that problem. He's already fixed it. So if he can fix the biggest problem in your life, why can't we trust that his love will bring about this, every problem we've got on this side of eternity? He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. He's already done it. You're loved. But Paul says, be careful, because fear wants you to forget that God's powerful, forget that you're loved. You see, when fear comes in your life, it, it may overwhelm you for a moment, but there is nothing stopping you from taking a breath and beginning to believe the promises of God instead of what fear says. See, if you focus on the enemy, the problems will always seem huge. The result is fear. When you focus on God, your faith grows as you realize that God is bigger than your problems. Romans 8, 31 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? God is on your side. Come on, you're gonna come out of this and we're gonna make it. Focus on God, not the enemies. It is a choice. That's why we worship. It's not just a tradition. Worship is connecting with God and focusing on Him and forgetting about fears. But I have, in my years, I have just noticed that people are scared about possibilities they can't see. 
in the dark. Things that might happen, they get scared of. Winston Churchill was asked how he made it through World War II with all of its fears. He said, I act like I'm unafraid. I choose not to fear. I will not dread this. I will walk as though I am not. I'm going to trust God. When everything seems like it's about to fall, what do you have to hold on to? And in our world today, so many times, we don't know what's to come. But so many times, don't you and I face what might come tomorrow with fear? Some of you fear the future. You aren't sure what God's ultimate plan for your life is. You fear taking a step of obedience with God. What, what if this doesn't work? Some of you fear the unknown. No matter how big or strong you are, there is something you fear. And whether we want to admit it or not, we all face fear. But for some of you, it's bigger. You are consumed with fear. God, I, I don't know what's next. I don't know what to expect or what to do. I'm afraid. There's no clear path to the future. So many times you stop growing because of fear. Change frightens you. So rather than move forward and change, you stand still. Keep moving forward. Obey God's voice in spite of your fear. When you move forward in faith, instead of standing still in fear, God provides. What could you do? What would you do for God if you realized that you would overcome all opposition with his help? He is your protector. And I love what Isaiah, Isaiah 43 says, but now this is what the Lord says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God didn't say, you'll never go through hard times. You're never gonna suffer, you're never gonna have a problem. No, what God said was, Fear not. Even though you encounter hard times, I am going to be with you and I'm going to protect you. That financial challenge, I'm with you. That family situation, I'm with you. Rejection, failure, heartache, loss, the unknown, I'll be with you. I am your protector. God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? How do you overcome fear? By remembering that God is with you and God will protect you. You are not in this alone. You do not have to do this in your own strength. Even if you feel all alone, you're not. I will be with you. Jesus is saying, I'm here. I'm right here. What would happen in your life instead of looking at fear you just called to Jesus? Don't be afraid or discouraged. Listen to me, for the Lord my God is with you. And he will not fail you or what? Forsake you. And isn't that incredible? Let me ask you this question. What could go right? What could go right? The fear of something bad happening in your life may very well keep God out of bringing something good in your life. Psalms 91 2. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. He is my place of safety. He is my God. And I will trust in Him. What's the opposite of fear? It's trust. I'm going to trust you. It doesn't mean the fear goes away. It means I take the courageous step of trusting God for who he says he is. Even if the worst thing happened, God would be with me. 
in that too. I'm going to do everything I can to stop it. I'm going to do everything I can to change it. But see, even if it happens, I am is still with me.